Y'all are degen. All you care about is the new shiny upcoming mints, and that's what I'm gonna give you. So let's get right in the video. There is absolutely no need for an introduction on this video because you guys know what we're here to do. Talk about the best upcoming mints on the Solana NFT blockchain, and I gotta dive right into it because we're talking about Glizzy Royale. Cody, there's no chance that I just heard you correctly. Did you just say Glizzy Royale? Yeah, picture Fortnite using Mecha hot dogs as your character. Okay, I would love it if Fortnite joined the NFT space. I think they would absolutely bang, but since they're not going to, why not have Glizzy Royale take their spot? They're going with the easy to learn, hard to master approach. Like I said, the gameplay is almost exactly the same as Fortnite. You start in the air, use a glider to get boots on the ground. There will be a max of 20 players in one game, last man standing wins, Hunger Games style. Players can select up to three NFT based weapons for their starting loadout. If you don't own any weapons yet, you can start with a basic semi-automatic gun, but you can earn and buy weapons using the Glizzy token in their store. You can find guns and loot crates, but they're hard to find, they're very scarce, which puts more value in the weapon that you can buy. During the game, there's a force field similar to the storm that shrinks as the game goes on, making it so that you have to battle your opponents you can't run and hide. They'll have two game modes ready at launch, solos, and then squad up where you can squad up with up to four people and battle opponents. Same map, mechanics, and gameplay. Speaking of the map, let's show off the map and what do you guys notice about it? We got a little salute to other NFT projects here, naming certain areas of the map after them like Mindfolk Farms, Monkey Business Backwoods, Degen District, Borioku Bulwark, Stone Sword, swap in pesky penguin pond. It's going to be a play to earn game where you can wage your glizzy token against opponents. Right now, they already have a 1v1 demo available to play just so you can check out the game, but they are currently working on that multiplayer battle royale for launch. Anyone can play the game regardless if you hold an NFT or not. However, you're probably going to need some glizzy token to wager and earn in the game. They put a huge emphasis on accessibility, which I think is very smart because they want to have the most people playing the game as possible. Post mint, there's going to be multiple different airdrops where they're going to airdrop guns and weapons, but you can also level up your guns by killing people in game and time survive. Weapon upgrades are earned as you level up your weapon. Attachments like red dot, hand grips, thermal scopes can help increase your accuracy. They also have a stake to earn mechanic where you can stake to accumulate the glizzy token. Outside of staking, they also have a unique fusion mechanic. Holders will be able to fuse two NFTs to create a more rare character. The more rare your NFT, the more token that you receive during staking. These are dropping on the Magic Eden Launchpad. It is a collection size of 4,000 minting for 1.5 soul on April 25th. Hold up, wait a second. Do me a favor right now. I'm gonna need you to go down and smash the like button. No, it's seriously important. Please like this video and I'll tell you why later. The second project I wanna talk about is Asimo X. What stands out to me here is obviously the art. This anime meta is flying off the shelves. Kinda gives me Oni Force vibes a bit, which is the first anime project that I was actually exposed to in the NFT space. Huge fan of what they were doing even though their floor price dropped off a cliff. It's got that very futuristic Neo Tokyo style art. Again, I'm a huge anime fan, so I had to tell you guys about this art. What I like even more than their art is the fan art. Look at some of the talented people in their community. Look, like this fan art right here, I think should honestly be a one of one in their collection. It's that good. I've always been someone who loves the idea of fan art. I think that it shows how talented some people are in your community. It builds you a tighter knit community itself. And I know somebody's gonna steal my idea, but I think I'm gonna do this if I ever do drop my own project. I think it would be sick if projects use these pieces inside their collection as one of ones or something. Obviously asking permission of the artist first, maybe even auction them off before the sale of your NFT first, kind of give back to these artists. You're gonna obviously accumulate a ton of artists into your community because you're helping them out that way. I'm all about supporting artists in the NFT space. Outside of their dope art, Asma has plans to launch a DAO, staking for the Borg token. They're gonna create comics and eventually release a play to earn game. The game is further down the line, phase three of the roadmap. So don't expect anything like that to be available anytime soon. I'm getting a slight vibe that they're trying to do too many things all at once. I much prefer if they just kind of focus a little bit, but I do know that we're in that meta where you have to kind of show off that you know everything. So this is a collection size of 4,444. It looks like they're going to give away 3,200 total whitelist spots, but 3,100 of those are already taken. And I don't like giving you projects that are too late where you guys can't still get on the whitelist. So here's the deal. They still have 600 OG whitelist spots available and OGs can actually mint two of the NFT at mint. One thing that's kind of weird is the fact that the mint is less than a week away and they still don't have a website they said coming soon since the end of march they also have an undocs team they did a little bit of information on the team in their discord but nothing too relevant about the project these are minting on april 29th for 1.5 soul you guys know that the point of these videos from me is to do two things i like to show off some cool art but i also like to show off some innovative things that haven't been done before in our space introducing soul spot soul spot is a platform to create your digital identity so these spot cards are essentially unique 
unique to the user because it's based on your activity on the Solana blockchain. This is kind of crazy, so just hear me out for a second. Let me know what you think about this. They basically run a weekly scan of the blockchain and your NFT will change based on your activity. This makes the card dynamic to its owner. So even if you buy on the secondary market within a week, this is gonna be customized to you. Holders will be able to see new change to their card, like new cool badges, new designs, maybe new widgets. Here's where it starts to kind of get strange. If you don't hold a card, you will still have a profile. Since the blockchain transactions are public, they can create a profile for every wallet. So if I get a profile regardless, why hold a SoulSpot NFT? So spot card holders get premium access to the SoulSpot application. It basically just gives you additional customization features. They still haven't released all the widgets that you're gonna be able to change on the card itself. They're gonna be innovative and change as they go on. I think this project's cool. I like bringing different projects that do really cool things, but I don't know how I feel about this one. We all know the blockchain is super public and they're trying to take advantage of that public information. We're very early into crypto as a space itself. So I'm curious to see where this goes. How is this public information going to be used on your profile? If we're thinking in web two terms, right? Like for marketing. So imagine like Facebook or Google, it's basically going to be able to customize ads to your profile based on your activity on the blockchain. Obviously there's a ton of pros and cons to everything being so public on the blockchain. So what do you think? Do you like that you'll have a profile automatically created based on your activity? Or do you think that's an invasion of privacy? Let me know in the comment section down below. And I did tell you that I would tell you why I need you to like this video from early in the video. It's because that would be really dope. Let's get into the fourth project, the Amigos. All right, what do you guys think about these homies on the blockchain? Collection size of 3000. This is the art. Mint price, TBD. Mint date, TBD. Discord, I'm not in it. Website, can't find it. White paper, what's that? Less than 50 tweets. Okay, we're a little bit early on this one, but they do seem to be getting some hype with over 13,000 followers on Twitter. And what do you guys think? They kind of remind me of those old toys, those little mighty beans and Damn it, I did it again. I always dox myself in saying how fucking old I am in videos like this. Let me guess, everybody watching this video was like not even born when Mighty Beans were a thing, right? But what we do know about this project so far is they have released a few sneak peeks. They got a pilot, a soccer player, and some other fashionable amigos. The interesting thing is that all of the sneak peeks that they've shown so far have been moving similar to Invisible Friends on ETH. I'm hoping that this project follows suit. However, we have seen time and time again that projects show in their sneak peeks, oh look, we're gonna be animated, oh look, we're gonna be moving, and by the time Mint Date comes, that's not the case. What do you guys think? Innovative or not? Do me a favor, as we are on the road to 20,000 subscribers, can you subscribe to the YouTube channel right now? You know what else you can do? After you subscribe, you just like the video, you commented down below, and then you were like, what do I do next? Oh, you watched that video. <laughs> 